third part in a continuing series. Uh, the last couple of papers that I presented, one in 2008 and then one last year, uh, all talked about my application, um, which I'll get to in a little bit. But this time I uh, had some collaborators. Uh, Cliff, uh, Cliff Flint did some consulting work for me, and then Don Porter was able to help uh, uh, sort out a performance problem in the Tickle 4 that, uh, that we identified. So uh, we all put our heads together and put a, put a kind of a case history here together. So uh, basically, I just want to kind of go through all the, the uh, things that we found. It uh, gives you a little bit of uh, uh, understanding. Can you please use, oh, the mic use the microphone? Yes. Better? There we go. OK, so it uh, gives you a little. Oops, no, good. OK, there we go. Uh, so, so it gives you a little bit of an introduction to Fossil. It was the first time I've used, used Fossil. Um, I'd always just kind of pulled the uh, pickle trees down from the tarball from the website and uh, never, never done anything with Fossil. Uh, so a couple of little uh, introductory uh, commands there and, and uh, understanding of how that works, especially if you want to do something like go back through a sequence of, of Fossil check-ins and find a bug or find a uh, performance change or something like that. Uh, it talks about our mechanism for discovering where this bottleneck was uh, from and, and what the fix was and then finally results in, our, in my application. So the, the application is uh, Caliber LBS. It's a layout versus schematic comparison tool. So uh, you take a chip layout and you try to figure out how it relates to the schematic that it was designed from and make sure it has the same functionality, same transistors in the same places um, to, to kind of verify that the, that the silicon will work the way that the simulator says that the schematic will work. Uh, so it's very high performance, high uh, multi-threaded uh, graphical analysis type of thing. And we've got a uh, Tickle uh, programmable uh, module that, the, that our users can uh, use to kind of characterize individual devices and that gets called from the multi-threaded code. So to recap the two papers previously really quick, we have this module called Device TBF, which is a Tickle-based user extension. Um, we had a single-threaded implementation of that back in 2008, which I presented in, in a paper then. Uh, we added multi-threading. I presented that last year. And one of the things we found when we added multi-threading is, is that there were uh, some, th some, some bottlenecks in uh, uh, 8.4 uh, threading, when, especially when you're converting a lot of doubles into strings. We had a, one customer test case where they were doing that, and uh, so I'll show you some, some of the time results there. I was able to duplicate that, uh, uh, that result in a standalone C and Tickle uh, benchmark, and then I, I, as I took that benchmark and ported it onto Tickle 8.5 and 8.6, I found that the bottleneck had gone away. So there's a little bit of uh, performance data. Oops, I lost one of my one of my uh, pictures. There's a C picture in the bottom uh, right there. Uh, anyway, so so this shows you the, the performance. And you see uh, what's the, the bad stuff that's happening um, is this is this is the system time or the kernel time, and it, it starts going up quite a lot at 8.4. It stays flat at zero in both Tickle 8.5 and 8.6. And you also see that the real time in Tickle 8.4, as you add more and more processors, starts to go up. And so that's, that's typically not what you want to see in a multi-threaded application, that it runs slower multi-threaded than it is single-threaded. Um, so, and, and you see on the, uh, on the uh, Tickle 8.5 and 8.6, it's actually scaling quite nicely. Although at a at a slower uh, at a slower baseline, so Tickle eight five eight six in, in, uh, in terms of the expert performance is uh, not as fast as it was in Tickle eight four single threaded. Oops, there's the other one. That's the C plus plus version. So it's about ten times faster than just using uh, uh, C plus plus math and doubles. So I uh, just kind of go through some of the fossil things that, that I learned. Uh, and so if, it, if anybody hasn't done fossil before, here's the, this is how you get your fossil clone of the, of the tickle uh, 
repository, and that's what we started with, using the fossil clone command. And then we use fossil finfo to generate a list of basically all the, all the check-ins. So we wanted to get um, a, a list of basically the candidates for where this change might have happened, where the, the performance improved between tickle 8.4 and tickle 8.5. Uh, so a couple of different options there. There's a brief option that's useful. There's also a fossil timeline command. The, the F info is talking about an individual file. And we were focusing in on the tickle thread alloc.c because we thought that might be where the, the problem was. We thought it might have something to do with uh, threaded allocations. It turned out not to be that, but uh, it was still able to identify the, the uh, issue for us. And uh, the fossil timeline command tells you more about the history of the entire project. So and then uh, uh, there's a script basically that I'll go into in a second here, but uh, uh, basically uses fossil open and fossil checkout to do the uh, um, basically get you a, a snapshot of the source code. Um, and then the fossil info command is also very useful to see what what changed on a particular check-in. And then you run the T-based build. So basically, you know, going through all the, the, uh, the check-ins, uh, uh, and then uh, you check it out, configure, build, build the benchmark, and then run the benchmark and get a time. So this is, this is an overall script that basically does all those things. Uh, started basically with an edited uh, uh, copy of the uh, of that uh, fossil F info um, that the, the, that command is, is pretty uh, brute force. It just basically gives you everything, so you have to go in and kind of pick out what you want. But then it goes through all the entries in the fossil F info, and it pulls out that uh, unique identifier that you're probably all familiar with. If you've done, if you've done anything with fossil, where everything is a, a, a long string of characters and numbers, each check in. Uh, checks that out, does the uh, configuration, does the build, and, run, and then builds the benchmark against the original build, and then uh, uh, runs it. And uh, the long and hold, we, we ran those uh, releases, and we see a really nice uh, step. This is the ratio of running two threads against six threads on all the different releases, and you can see that uh, tickle 8.4, the scaling is, uh, is not not so good, and then at some point in the Tickle 8.5 beta development, the scaling gets much better. So, uh, and then it remains the same in uh, Tickle 8.6. So we found the specific change that uh, caused the, uh, the improvement in performance, and those are the numbers up there. And you can see that's the check-in, the fossil info from there. It was the merge of the numerics branch. Um, so that was a, quite a few changes in the way Tickle 85 handled uh, numbers, and uh, so this is so a lot of the a lot of the stuff that was done so far was uh, work that Cliff did uh, under contract with Mentor to do, basically try to just do the, the rough search for where this change happened, um, and then uh, he got in contact with Don, and Don was the one who was able to figure out Don uh, Porter, uh, who was able to figure out the next part. So he wrote this part of the paper. Um, which was, there were two changes really that, uh, that improved the performance. One was that the, the, the system for formatting the strings from, from, uh, uh, from the doubles changed quite a bit and that that had gotten rid of a lot of the, the contention that was going on. But that the specific uh, contention was going on over the tickle precision uh, global number, which basically all the threads were going after the same locked version of Tickle Precision. Um, and there was also a change to make the Tickle Precision variable uh, per thread base. So there's no, not as much locking uh, going on in there anymore. So uh, um, both the changes, two changes together, either one independently would probably have given us the, the performance benefit that uh, they, they work together to uh, improve things. So uh, then the question is, we're, we're kind of stuck on Tickle 8.4 for a lot of reasons that I won't go into now, but uh, a lot of changes would be required, and then some, some changes actually at our customer sites as well, if they're using these things. Um, 
So we're, we're hoping to get to it, but it'll be at least a, another year or two away. Uh, so uh, importing that whole set of changes back to Tickle 4 would have been kind of well beyond the scope of a, of a patch. Um, so Tom was able to put together a new uh, uh, solution that basically took advantage of the fact that in, in this system the reads are, are happening much more frequently than the writes on that Tickle precision value. And there's a, a process global value utility from H5 that, that gives you a, an ability to have a, a, a cash value of the, of the global value and then uh, using an epic counter to uh, uh, show whether that number is valid or not. So basically that was provided as a patch on the Tickle 8.4.20. And uh, I ported that into uh, the Caliber. And, uh, and this is the actual running application. You can see the scaling running up to 32 processors. It's about, it's running about half the time that the old one did. And it continues to scale as you go you know, well beyond where's the, the the old version stopped scaling right or a little bit beyond 10 processors. Um, in fact, 10 processors was the fastest and then it got slightly slower as time went up. So you added more processors. And that's the full application. So um, uh, Tickle was, was uh, bringing, you know, there's a lot of processing going on, um, but that all that locking going on all the threads was throttling the whole thing. Of course, now it continues to scale uh, right on up 30 processors. And that's basically everything. Any questions? Yeah. Um, wouldn't have uh, fossil bisect be an option to find the spot where the where the change happened? I'll, I'll defer that with a cliff. Fossil expert. There he is. Okay. Part of the trick was we didn't know what the change was. We know what the behavior of the change was. Yeah. The thing so, is. Uh, the be behavior is different speed. So you could say the slow speed is bad, and the, high, uh, the good speed is good, and then you possibly could be said. Oh, okay, yeah, I could have, I could have done a, a byte. Um, it was fast enough from our purposes to just take everything within a time range and say I'm going to check out all of these and run them all. I'll be doing a whip on another variation on that theme. Um, I have 2,700 copies of Tickle compiled on my system now. <laughs> <laughs> Big disks are, are fun to have. <clears throat> Any others?